Hello folks, I am Halcylion. Let me just say that I am overwhelmed by the support you've shown my Bannerlord video so far. Thank you for everything. Now, many of you have asked for a merchant-focused playthrough and so, here we are. Welcome to the first episode of Trader Stories. Let's begin with character creation. I was tempted to pick Aserai for the trade bonuses, again, but this time I followed my heart and chose to be Batanian. In order to have an optimal trade experience, I still picked whichever background options would increase my social attribute, however, the trade skill was not part of the deal, so I would have to put focus points into it as I level up. Meet Harold of House Forester, our main boy for this series. He doesn't look much like a trader, but he may surprise us all. So let us pack our belongings and prepare for adventure. Our journey begins in a training field not far from the city of Poros, and because I'm new around these here parts, I figure I'll find out more about this land by heading into the city and talking with the locals. But just as I set off towards the town, I get accosted by some nasty individuals. I briefly considered paying them off, since they outnumbered me 10 to 1, but I decided to take them on and see how I fare. What can I say? Horse archery is a great equalizer when you are outnumbered. But against the last looter, I dismounted and faced him man to man. I have greater control of my weapons when I'm on foot. Soaked in the blood of my enemies, I decided to casually stroll into town and sheepishly ask for directions. As I arrived, I've overheard some gossip that a certain person of interest has a job for a man of my predilection, so naturally, I went to listen to what he has to say. One of his thieves came about a bit of silver ore, and he needed me to fence it for him. I paid the required 500 denars, but before leaving, I still needed to learn of the markets by talking to the townsmen, some of which skipped puberty. According to the rumors, cheese would sell well into the nearest city, so I would buy as much as I could. But not before visiting the tavern and meeting new and interesting people. A thug and a surgeon. The surgeon is a bit expensive for my current budget, but considering his prestigious upbringing, he would be worth the investment. Unfortunately, in the market, I only had enough money to purchase five shipments of cheese, and that wouldn't bring me too much profit. With everything settled, I departed for the city of Zionica, but not before I was stopped by a merchant who noticed me pick up the stolen silver and asked me to turn it in for a fraction of what I paid for it. I had a choice to make. Money or morals? You already know what I chose. Too bad my criminal rating in the Southern Empire increased as well. If I was to keep it up, it would become impossible to conduct my trade in this territory, so I should tread carefully. On my way to the next town, I pondered selling my inventory into a village, but decided that the town might be more profitable. It was. The cheese and the stolen silver fetched over 1,000 denars, so I was back in action. In Zionica, I had no need to ask for rumors, because I was headed back to Poros, and I already knew what they would need. Grain or grapes? The second would be more profitable, so I loaded 700 pounds onto my convoy. We could only comfortably carry 170, which means that me, my men and my mule would struggle dragging all these grapes back to Poros. As we were crawling towards my destination, I saw a group of peasants returning from the markets, so I was hoping they would sell me some mules to ease our burden. They had nothing. Because we moved at a breakneck speed of one mile per hour, a band of four looters caught up to us, smelling a big payday. They were immediately executed for the crime of stupidity. I could take ten of them by myself, and I wasn't alone. They should have found another mark, but their loss is my gain, because along the ton of grapes I brought into town, I also pawned off their gear, taking my wallet to a very nice sum of 1700. So far, my adventures provided plenty of experience, and I could start focusing on skill development. Charm would make it easier for me to barter with nobles and gain renown, while the archery perk increased my accuracy. As for the skills I would focus on, I chose riding, one-handed and scouting, because in the early stages I'll be doing these three activities anyway, so I might as well earn some extra experience. But my earlier ordeal taught me that trying to trade without a proper convoy is painful, so I decided to invest into some beasts of burden. Perhaps these peasants have some cheap horses. Indeed they do. Now I can trade larger volumes and earn more money, ain't this wonderful? I would also require protection from bandits, so it was about time to hire some volunteers. My first target? 
the village of Onika, which is situated just outside Poros. And here I got a brilliant idea. Since this village does not sell its goods to Poros, perhaps I could buy some olives, walk 5 meters and execute a flash sale. Easiest 300 denars I've ever gained. This also increased my main level and I could develop my social attribute as well as my medical skill, which would prove useful in the future. Now that I have a proper convoy, let's do a real sale. Dairy products. 1819 purchase price. 2417 sale price. 600 denars profit. Not a whole lot, but at least we're getting somewhere. But some of that money would again be spent into cotton and grain to be taken back to Poros for an additional 500. Now these trades aren't going great, but considering I'm only at the start, it's pretty good. Now as I travel from town to town doing these sales, I always look for volunteers to hire to my convoy. 20 recruits is all I need for now. From here, my plan was to purchase some grain and go west. But I've overheard that a craftsman cannot sell his goods in this town for a reasonable price, and so he sent me with a bunch of wool in the opposite direction to Vostrum. The same merchant who tried to rob me of my legally obtained silver blocked my path yet again, demanding the wool I've been entrusted with. But a promise is a promise, so I kindly told him to go love his mother, and not only did he take offense to my advice, but he also snitched on me, increasing my criminal rating to 30 in this zone. What did I say earlier about trading carefully? I think this is the last of my illicit enterprise, I'd not want to ruin my trade opportunities for some quick cash. Since I am traveling to unfamiliar territory, the only way to increase my profits is through speculation. The lands around Vostrum produce grain, salt and fish. Perhaps lactose sells well over there, let's buy some. And since traveling can get boring, perhaps I could also socialize with any nobles I meet along the way, give them a gift of 15 denars and get some levels in charm. It's a good way of increasing my main level and since I already got 5 focus points in charm, I might as well make use of it. Some of these nobles also have information about a certain artifact I found at the beginning of my journey, so it may be a good idea to get that info now, rather than later. Before landing in Vostrum I shall make a pit stop into its bound villages and purchase some cheap salt. Supposedly it brings some good profit back in Poros. Anyway, I arrive in Vostrum, we deliver the wool, get paid 650 Deutschmarks, purchase some beer and head back west. Poros earns me a nice sum of money and Zionica makes me additional profits, putting me very close to 5000 dinars. Close, but no cigar. I really want that 5000, so I'm banking on winning a practice fight in the arena for an easy 250 dinars. What's this? A tournament? A surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. I'm not very confident in my ability to win this tournament and yet... I welcome the challenge. If I had more money and proper equipment, I'd bet on myself, but since I'm not so sure, I'll only bet on the first round. In the unlikely event that I win, I'll get a nice 360 denars. If I'm defeated, I only lose an acceptable amount of 150. Bet placed? Let's go. In the first round, I have to fight against my very own companion, Morin on the Surgeon. Hopefully my teammate will be able to carry me, because I don't think I can handle a 2v1. But he's so fast, I cannot keep up with him and... Uh, He's down. I gotta fight both opponents myself. With some nice footwork, I was able to evade some of their strikes, block some others and despite getting injured, I managed to knock one of them down. A 1v1 against the surgeon would be easy to win. And so, the first round was a victory. Round 2 would be much more difficult because I was facing a sergeant decked out in heavy armor. All I could do in this round was keep the sergeant focused on me, survive and let my companion work his magic with the javelins. And guess what? It worked. Round 3 was just as challenging because I was faced with another elite soldier, but maybe my teammate would be helpful. I was hoping we'd deal with this fight like in the last round, with a companion shooting missiles into the carapace of my opponent, but he instead drew his blade. We both managed to deal good damage to this tank, mainly by scratching his back with our swords, but eventually I was left in a 2v1. A couple of lucky strikes put the soldier out of commission, and I was left to fight against a regular bandit. Needless to say, I won this round too, and when I saw who I was facing in the final stage, I regretted not placing bets in round 2 and 3, because I was sure I could easily defeat this trained infantryman. I placed a bet now, but the winnings wouldn't be as great. With some solid footwork, I was able to quickly defeat my opponent, and now I have gained a nice amount of money from the bets I've made, plus a very decent helmet worth 1500 denars. Because it looks so ugly, I'd much rather liquidate it for money I can invest into proper trade goods. With this victory and nearly 7000 denars in my bank account, I believe now would be a good time to make the cut in today's episode and end it on a positive note. These were the first 11 days of my trade journey. Up next I hope to find good deals on some items that can be taken west and I shall earn enough profit to invest into my very first workshop. But we don't yet know how things will pan out. Anyway, this was all I had for today.
Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.